So, Santa brought you a laser engraver for Christmas this year. Congratulations. Laser engraving is a great hobby, and it's even a great uh, business opportunity that you could start. But there are a few things that you have to keep in mind, <clears throat> and I'll share today with you my tips so you can engrave like a pro right out of the gate. Avoid some of the mistakes that I've made early on with my laser engraver. So stay tuned as we get to my top tips for best practices and some of the things that you will need along the way. My name is Steve, this is Wilmer Woodworks, and I have made a lot of projects using my laser engraver, either as a full project just with the laser engraving and cutting, or as adding uh, customization to a lot of my woodworking projects. First up, you've got to know your laser. Uh, for the hobbyist, there's two main types of lasers that are out on the market today. There's the diode, which I have here, and also CO2. Now, the CO2 laser uses a glass glass cylinder that contains CO2 and that activates the laser beam and goes through a few mirrors uh, to a focal length. The diode is a little different because it's just like an old school laser pointer whereas it's just attached to this little gantry uh, so there is no back laser and there are no mirrors to adjust. The third type is a fiber laser. Now fiber lasers are, lasers are a little bit more uh, on the higher end scale so they're not really the hobbyist laser. Now safety is key when you're using any sort of laser. Uh, you don't want to look at your laser as it's working, it's very tempting. And a lot of lasers do put this little shield over where the beam goes, but there will be some additional space. So most lasers, when you do purchase them, will include a set of safety glasses. And just like with woodworking, it is always advised to wear proper safety equipment. And remember this, there is no more important safety rule than to wear these safety glasses. Another thing to keep in mind is work in a well-ventilated area. My garage, I have the large door open and I always have multiple fans going to push all of the uh, smoke out of my workspace. I will eventually build a hood. I installed this uh, outdoor vent so it will fan and pull everything out. This is especially important when you're working with all materials, not just wood. Uh, some people think, well, just because it's wood, it's natural. You don't want to be inhaling that into your lungs. So woods, plastics, acrylics, leather, anything. You want to be in a well-ventilated area. You want to make sure that that plume of smoke is not sitting in the air and going into your lungs. Keep in mind when you do get a brand new laser is most of the lasers will be able to work alone. Uh, you can insert a memory card or an SD card into the laser to run it and operate it. Or you can opt to do what I do is I just hook it through this USB, but you will need software to run the program. I prefer using Lightburn software. It's very affordable for the hobbyist, and you can actually get almost a 45-day free trial. I think it starts with a 30-day, and then you can extend that through a few extensions. Um, but even when you do purchase it, I feel I think the hobby level uh, license for Lightburn is about sixty to ninety dollars. I know they just raised their pricing. I think it may be ninety dollars now, and that is a yearly subscription. But you do get all the updates uh, for free once you do sign up for that. And this software, Lightburn, allows you to cut or engrave on twenty-nine different settings. So each uh, go around can have a different setting, and it gives you two toolpaths as well. If you need more, they do offer a pro version, but generally the core version is appropriate enough for the hobbyist. Materials matter. Your engraver can work with a wide variety of materials, but as a beginner and a hobbyist, I would recommend that you stick to wood, leather, and some acrylics, depending on the laser that you have. There are companies out there that make this multi-layer acrylic that is very thin, and then when you etch it out, you can see the bottom layer. Uh, wood is a great option for beginners and enthusiasts. You ha can get wood pretty much anywhere. Two by material, plywood. Most times your machine will come with small plywood sheets. However, you can go online and purchase larger sheets. Just keep in mind how much of a engraving area your machine actually has. Don't go out and buy two foot by two foot sheets if your machine can only handle 15 by 15 uh, because you will be constantly having additional pieces in your shop that you're trying to use every last square inch. 
Uh, acrylic and leather are also affordable. You can find affordable options uh, on Amazon or Hobby Lobby, Michaels, any craft store. Every material reacts differently to your laser's power and speed settings. Start by creating a test grid to see how different combinations of power and speed affect your materials. This will help you dial in the perfect settings for clean cuts and crisp engravings. For example, when cutting 1 8 plywood, a good starting point is 95% power at 300 millimeters per second. Adjust based off of the results and don't forget to take notes so you can replicate this success for future projects. Most machines like this Algo DIY kit come with a small tool which is a setup jig. So this has a small little lip that will allow you to adjust it. So once I put this material on my honeycomb bed, and honeycomb beds are definitely needed when doing cuttings, you drop your laser down to that lip and then adjust your set screws. This will ensure that the perfect focal length is achieved on your laser. Another important thing to consider is air assist. So on the beginning of this cut, we did not have the air assist on. But as the cut continued, we turned it on. You can see how clean these cuts actually are now. Like any new tool, the main key is practice. With practice and small projects, starting with uh, coasters, little charcuterie boards, signs, or even ornaments. The key is practice. The more you do, the better you'll get. There are tons of free resources out there to help you get started. Uh, my channel is just one of many of the resources that you can check out. Um, there are Facebook groups. I have a Facebook group. There are YouTube channels. You can follow my YouTube channel, but there are others as well that do different laser uh, guides. And uh, Reddit threads, there's a whole resource uh, out there that you have access to. And the majority of it is free. So be sure to lean on these resources, ask questions. Uh, most of these communities are open to people that are new to uh, laser engraving and are happy to answer any of the trivial little questions like how do I align this or how do I accomplish that. So yeah, even even in our community in my YouTube videos, if you have a question about something that's not specifically covered in the video, I do not uh, in the least mind if you ask a generic random question. Learning from others is a great way to fast track your skills. If this video has helped you feel more confident in using your new laser, feel free to hit that like button. And in the comments below, drop and let me know what your first laser engraving project is going to be. Don't forget to subscribe for more tips, tutorials, and projects coming up. I also have a membership uh, community building. Uh, that offers exclusive one-on-ones and uh, members only uh, behind the scenes and live streams. So be sure to check that out as well. Till next time, my name is Steve, and I do appreciate you watching. Take care, and happy in laser engraving.